Next, we're going to look at the spot healing brush tool. And that gives us a lot of options as how we try to tweak things and how to change and to remove problems in my area. So to find my healing brushes, there's many different options. I look for the little band-aid with the little circle on the side. The spot healing brush, I'm going to click and hold and pull out like there's many other tools. The spot healing brush is here. And it's probably the easiest of the tools to use when it gets into the touch-up work. I've selected my brush. It's got some brush settings here. On the top of my options panel, I can also make some adjustments. In the process of adjusting this, I'm going to go ahead and zoom in a little bit so I can see things a little bit clearer. I recommend doing all your adjustments at 100 or even 200%. 200% allows you to see something. If it looks good to you at 200%, it's going to look good at everybody else when they see the picture at 100% size. So I go into my options bar once I've got the tool selected. And I'm going to go ahead and open up the different brush settings here. And I'm going to go ahead and specify a brush size of 25 pixels. And I'm going to 0% hardness. In other lessons, we'll get into more about what that matters and what that means. So it's a nice hard brush here, but it's still fairly small. It shows me the brush here. And I'm going to go ahead and touch out some of those little scratches in the particular sky. So I'm just going to paint out that area. And it removes all that file, which is really, really nice. Now, the thing you want to keep in mind is when you're doing your touch-up spots, you don't want to go too far into the layer. If you touch some other area, it might get confused on what it's trying to remove automatically, and it might make some smudges by dragging something that you didn't want cloned or touched out in the process. So make sure you're keeping your brush in similar patterns, something like that, and it does a pretty good job of making the healing selection. So you zoom out. Control S or Command S to save your work. And you move on to the next step. Applying a content aware patch. So in the tools panel, we're gonna go ahead to the object selection. We're gonna click and drag out to the object selection tool, not the quick selection tool. That used to be my favorite, uh, but the, quick, the object selection tool has really gotten good here in the last version to a Photoshop. Uh, and so we're gonna go ahead and select our boy. The area that we wanna select, I just drag an area, a marquee around him, give him a little bit more range and let it go and let it do its work. Now it will take some processing power depending on your computer speed. It may or may not uh, happen very quickly, but now it's done a pretty good job of selecting the boy and you can see the selection is now nailed in on the boy that we don't want in the photograph. So make sure I have all the boys selected and it's not cut into the boy. I'm going to go to select, modify, and then over to expand. And I'm gonna go ahead and expand it two pixels to expand the area that is selected and hit okay. It's made it slightly larger around the edge of him. Now on the tools panel, we're gonna go ahead and find the patch tool. That's under with the different healing brushes down to the patch tool, third option in the healing brush clone stamp selection area of the options uh, tools panel. So I've got the uh, patch tool selected and I'm gonna go ahead and now do a little bit of touch up of the boy. So I'm gonna go over, hover over the boy. The selection now pops up with a little arrow and the little patch quilt sign there. I'm gonna go ahead and click and drag over to the side and it's actually moved to an area next to the woman. And we'll go ahead and let go when I get him out of the space that I want, about like that. And I go ahead and let go. And the selection actually looks pretty good. It's done a really good job of doing that touch up. Now I will say this became a lot harder a few versions ago in Photoshop, but it's getting really smooth, really clean. And now is the computer doing a lot of the work for you? Sure, but you're telling it what you want to do. You're giving it parameters and selecting the boy, expanding the selection, and then moving it over. So you do have some control. It's not that computers are taking over the world in Photoshop will be completely made by robots and artificial intelligence. We do have some input in the process, which is a good thing. Then once we've got the selection done, and did a pretty good job. We want to get rid of these marquee tools. I'm going to go ahead and go to Select and then deselect or control D or command D if you like shortcuts. And now it's done a pretty good job of removing them. Impressive, not quite perfect. Now we'll make it even better. So let's repair some of the areas with the SAM tool. It's not a perfect touch up. You can see the brick mortars don't quite line up. It does look a little bit off in some areas. So instead of using some of the options like the patch or the healing brush, different options to clone there, we're gonna go down to the clone stamp tool. We'll do some of the manual adjustments. Now this. Uh, the options in terms of the spot healing and healing brush and some of these tools are very automatic and that's a good thing. The clone stamp tool does touch up work where you have control of I want this area to be moved to this area. You have a little more control and less of the automation process which is good in some ways. So I'm going to my toolbar. I'm going to go ahead and change it to 60 pixels and 30% hardness. And we do want to make sure that the option for aligned is selected. It probably is by default, but just make sure that option 
of Aligned is selected. I'm going to move, move the clone stamp tool to an area where the top of the bridge and the wall is smooth. I'm going to go and zoom in a little bit here. I'm going to hover over on my particular brush here. I'm going to hold Alt with the keyboard or Option if you're on a Mac. I think this is me the crosshairs like in a gun. I can narrow in on this particular selection and I can choose this is the area that I want to bullseye or target. I click, now I let go of Alt, and as I move my mouse over, it will take from the point here on the left, my plus sign where I targeted, and it will move it to the area on the right. So it's going to clone or move what I selected automatically to the right. Now the nice thing about Photoshop, it actually shows you what it would happen in real time. You can see the preview of what it was actually being adjusted from one section the other section. Now the key that you don't want to do is you don't want to have the mortars really off because if you do so it doesn't look right at all. The brick has looked like it's been through an earthquake and shifted or the mortars look like it was painted by or put together by someone who had no clue what they're doing in construction which might have been me. I not have a clue what I was doing in the construction. But you want to get those aligned before I actually click. Once I get them aligned the way I like I can click and drag and I can start to fix out those mortar sections to make it look more accurate in my clone stamp tool and to make different portions look more believable. Getting those corners aligned pretty good there. And that's starting to look pretty good in my overall selection. The floor isn't perfect. We can see there's a little bit of upheaval in this there. I'm gonna go ahead and Alt, select my point. Align that pretty good, and then start to touch up the floor. Something like that. Now, the clone stamp tool has some negative connotations. Some people think that it gives it this nasty, fake look. And if you're not careful, if you click too many times from the same alt click point, you can start to make it look very clone stamped. For example, I click here, and I click and drag. Now I shoot the same portion over and over. It starts to look very much like it has been cloned, which is the name of the tool, and it definitely looks kind of fake. It doesn't look very real or believable. So some people think, well, don't use the clone stamp tool. But the option to choose where you want that source to go and where you want to move it to is helpful that some of the more automatic tools like the healing brush or the spot healing brush or the patch tool or the content aware fill tool can't do. You have pluses and minuses. That's why it's there. So we've done our adjustments. We've made it look pretty good. And we can see here there are a few spots that we need to fix up with our lines for the buildings actually line up to make it look like it's going to be believable. Let me make my brush maybe a little bit smaller. Start to touch out that line so it looks pretty close. I'm going to click and let go again. Now I'm going to go ahead and click in here and line those edges. And that looks pretty good, but it takes multiple attempts to control and uncontrol so it makes many attempts to control and to get that different selection looking pretty good. And right now it actually looks really good. So that makes a major difference in my overall quality and makes a big difference. Control S or Command S to save your work or to file and save. I uh, like to go that way as well. And we've move on to the next step of the book. Next, let's go ahead and touch out this line here. And you can touch out anything else that needs to be fixed in your opinion. Go ahead and zoom out, zoom in to about 200%. I'm going to go ahead and see this this fold, the crease in the actual image before a scan is starting to look like some deterioration here. I'm going to go ahead and remove this. Now I'm going to use some different more automatic controls, but with the clone stamp tool, I'm going to go ahead and click and click an area to the left, hover over here and start to touch out part of that crease. Now that's a way if you want to go ahead and brush it out piece by piece. Another way that might be very helpful in the way of touch up work is to click, click over here. I'm going to click once. Now I'm going to go ahead and let go with my mouse. I'm not clicking anything on my mouse. I'm holding shift and I click again and it draws a straight line from point A to point B, which is very, very helpful when you do clone touch up work or even drawing a straight line. Click, let go, hold shift and click again. It will draw a line from point A to point B. So it draws that line very smooth and quickly to have a very accurate selection of that sky. And I'm going to go ahead and just touch out a little bit there. Make sure my Bridges are aligned, and that makes sometimes multiple clicks. I 
in the bridge because the curve makes it a little more difficult for sure. Use a mortar here. Mortar joint to fill, to fill in there. Thanks for joining me on Better Picks in just a few clicks. If you have any questions, put them in the comments below, and I look forward to answering them and seeing your discussion as we go forward. Don't forget to hit subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.